All right, let's see who we got in the audience. Okay, right, let's see. Let's see who's here. All right. So apparently on a Saturday night in Provo. Oh, we only have one black person. That's it? That's one? That's it? Come on. Provo, you can do better. Just one. This is terrible. How are you, honey? All right, give me the wink if they're holding you here against your will. Just let me know. Hates all around. <laughs> That's always I go to a lot. Of, I like I travel a lot. It always amazes me when I go places. I don't see people of color. That just amazes me when I travel. I was in Minot, North Dakota. No black people in North Dakota. No. I asked this one guy. I go. I go. Hey, where's the black part of town? And the guy actually goes, wherever you happen to be at the time. So. <laughs> I'm fighting off a cold, man. Nothing worse than fighting off a cold. I, matter of fact, I almost, I almost didn't show up. I was gonna cancel. I was gonna just, I was just gonna call in sick on this show. That's what you do when you don't want to go to work, right? Call in sick. Everybody calls in sick at their job. No one ever believes you when you do it. <laughs> Always gotta use your very best call in sick voice. When I used to work in an office, my very best call in sick voice was with Zelmer Fudd. Oh. I'm not feeling very well today. <laughs> I'll be in the Mawo. <laughs> well, then when you do get sick, what do you do? You go to work. It's like, man, I feel like crap. But no sense wasting a sick day. <laughs> How old are you? You, right there in the middle, in the black. You, how old are you? 17. 17, ain't that something? 17, sitting here with the grown folk tonight. <laughs> look at you, look at you, got a little puff, fuzz on your lip there, think you're grown. Got one hair coming out of your chin. Yeah. That's something, sitting here like you special. <laughs> you ain't even a man yet, 17. Don't get it, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Let me show you something. You see this? I'm a man. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm in the man club. I'm in the man club. He's 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 in the man club. Want to be in the man club, 17? Answer the man club question. You can be in the man club just like us. You ready? Here we go. Do you know where your prostate is? <laughs> You ain't a man till a team of experts come in the room and show you where your prostate is. I like that. <laughs> ain't really a whole team, but it feel like the whole team going in. <laughs> that is a wicked exam. That doctor comes in the office with some grease and a glove. That's all he brings. He ain't bring me no flowers. <laughs> he ain't take me out to dinner. I don't know what kind of grease they use on that exam, but it don't wash off. <laughs> Can't wipe it off. You walk around for three days. <laughs> 17. <laughs> Look at you. Look how good looking you are, too. Look at you. Got all your hair. I bet both your knees are real. Walk into a room and remember why you went in there. Seventeen. Don't get old, Seventeen. I'm telling you, fight it tooth and nail. Don't get old. They will do some things to you. Oh, I had that other exam. Oh, because I have health care now. I ain't always have health. They, you know what? In Canada, they got free health care. We fight over how we gonna pay for it, who are we gonna call it, who gonna name it. 
You could be in Toronto and break a nail. It's like, oh my God, I broke a nail. Really? Come on in, get an MRI. It's free, just a game. <laughs> I ain't never had health care before. And one day I was riding my bike, I fell. I didn't know what to do. So I went to the airport. Just laid on the x-ray machines. <laughs> broken? It feels broken. Now, I have health care. Be a more little proactive about my life. Like I had that other exam, uh, colonoscopy. <laughs> you ever heard of this one, 17, huh? No. No. They take a camera and they shove it right up you, right? They make you just groggy enough so you can't fight back. <laughs> take that camera, shove it up you and take pictures. And that is a selfie you do not want to put on Facebook. <laughs> That exam made me nervous. I ain't never had an exam like that before. I was really nervous. So I always deal with, with nervousness with a little humor. So I was messing with the doctor. I go, hey, listen, when I was like two or three, I swallowed a little truck. So see if you see it in there. <laughs> and the wise guy doctor I had goes, was it blue? <laughs> Seven. <laughs> kids, kids so bad. I was watching a talk show, Children Out of Control. 11, 12 years old on national TV, cursing at their mother. That's terrible. I mean, when I was 12 years old, my mother told me to wash the dishes. <laughs> you ain't washing no dishes. Suck my teeth, roll my eyes, and turn my head. Two weeks later, when I came to at the hospital, <laughs> those dishes are still sitting there waiting for me, too. You didn't play no crap back then. There were no timeouts. A timeout, what is that? How about a little knocked out for they behind? How about that? You know, kids today, they call 911 and turn you in. Man, I wish somebody had told me about that when I was a kid. My father been like, oh, you gonna call 911? All right, well, there's the phone. And here's you. Now, if you think you can make it from here to the phone, before I make it from here to your behind, go, go on. Call the police on me and an ambulance for yourself. Okay, good. <laughs> Sometimes I don't even blame the children, because they're children. Children are gonna get away with anything you let children get away with. Sometimes they ain't bad now, I'll, all I do is blame us the adults, because all we do now is give them labels. Oh, he's not bad. He's ADD. It's not his fault. He, he ADD. AD. D. Ain't nobody have ADD back in the day. You know what took care of ADD? Uh, B-E-L-T, that's what took care of that. That spells belt, 17, so they keep up with the show. There's an old African adage, goes like this. Takes a village to raise a child. Used to be like that. Used to be anybody in the neighborhood who knew you, they saw you do wrong, they was allowed to whoop your behind. I remember once I threw a snowball at a bus. Lady up, she saw me do it, she whooped my behind. She told lady, live across the street from me, she whooped my behind. <laughs> that woman told my mother whooped my behind, told my father, my father called the bus driver up. He came over, got some shots in. <laughs> and they weren't too particular about they swing at you back then either. Hairbrushes, extension cords, that big fork and spoon that hung on the wall in the kitchen. <laughs> She ain't never tossed no salads with them things. <laughs> tossed my behind around the living room. That's all she ever did. Anything she could find. She mad at you. She was in your room. She pick up a Hot Wheel track. Whoop you with that. Yeah. Everybody got whooped with a Hot Wheel track. Yeah. Many a time I went to school with them orange parallel lines across my behind. <laughs> ain't that about nothing? Give you a Christmas present and whoop your behind with it. Kids got too much of their Nintendo, Super Nintendo. PlayStation 1, 2, 3, 4, Xbox, Dreamcast, Game Boy, GameCube, Wii, Switch is the new one. How old are you over there with the glasses? Uh, 16. 16. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> <laughs> Who you here with, 16? Your mom and dad? Ain't that sad? <laughs> mom and dad wanted to have a Saturday night and they had to bring you along. Ain't that sad? <laughs> Ain't 
You guys got children? Did you bring them? No. You guys got children? Did you bring them? No. Children? Bring them? No. You getting that? See what I'm getting at, Mama Dad? You know what I'm don't bring anything to the club you don't really need. Sixteen. What gaming system you got at home? Sixteen. Xbox One. What you got? Seventeen. Nintendo Switch. Cause we're rich. We didn't have all them high tech toys when we were kids. Most high tech toy we had was Etch a Sketch. Oh, I said you played that game for hours. Hey, what are you making? Stairs. <laughs> oh man, I messed up. Hit the delete button. <laughs> My sister had a toy called a Susie Homemaker Easy Bake Oven. That heck? Cooked by light bulb. Cook a cake that big with a light bulb. <laughs> that was high tech. Had two little kids on the box staring into the oven, and right above their heads it said, Watch a cake bake right before your eyes. Yeah, you know why Johnny couldn't read? Because Johnny burnt his retinas out watching that cake bake. <laughs> we had simple toys. <laughs> had to use a little, a little imagination with our toys. We had Play Doh. Ain't nothing more simple than a can of Play Doh. Pop up with a fresh can. <laughs> 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 Yeah. yeah, everybody over 40 knows what a can of Play-Doh tastes like, too. <laughs> everybody, everything about our generation was better. We had better candy back in the day. We had that fashion candy necklace. Remember that little bees on the street eat some? Snap it out. <laughs> Give your friend some, let him lick on it. Snap it back. Nick would be all wet from spit and saliva on the show. But that little wax bottle with the juice in it. Remember that? Had like that much juice. Oh, well, that's refreshing. Mm. Looking cool walking down the street with your candy cigarette. That's right. You ever have a Red Bull 17? Huh? We didn't need Red Bull back in our day. We had pixie sticks. <laughs> Big straw full of sugar. Oh, man. I once ran from New York to Connecticut in six minutes. <laughs> good one. We had great, oh, remember this one? Remember those big red wax lips? Remember that one? Yeah. That wasn't a big seller in my neighborhood, but... Uh, <laughs> Knock yourselves out on that one. <laughs> I feel sorry for these kids today. Nothing's exciting. We had television. Television was exciting when we were kids, man. Mm. Every Sunday you watch the, the Walt Disney. Everything was exciting. They got too many channels. Hulu and Netflix and YouTube and cable. You know, they got like 5,000. We had seven channels. I had seven channels as a kid. Seven. But there was always something good on. Like we had a show where a dog could talk to humans. Lassie. Timmy's in the barn. And the barn's on fire. About a year after that show, they doubled down on us and gave us a, a dolphin that could talk to humans. Flipper. Timmy's in the barn. I don't know when these kids got so weak. Uh, I, I can't eat white bread because white bread has a gluten in it. Uh, I get a gluten in me. Uh, we grew up on the whitest of white bread of all time. Wonder bread. That was like biting into a cloud, it was so white. Help build a strong body 12 ways. 12 ways. I know a body can move 12 ways, but Wonder Bread would do that for you. 
You know what my favorite sandwich was when I was a kid? Spaghetti and meatball on Wonder Bread. That's enough gluten to kill four kids today. I don't blame, I don't blame these kids though. I don't, you know? Every commercial they see is a drug commercial. It's Zenitex right for you. Ask your doctor, do you need Zenitex? Zenitex may cause baldness, blindness, loss of appetite, tooth decay, anal leakage. Man, that is a lot to cure a runny nose, I'll tell you that right now. We had drug commercials back in the day, but they weren't trying to kill us. Watch this, 17. Plop, plop, fizz, fizz. Relief. No leaks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, why are they so lazy? Is this video games? They can't run, can't jump. They do this all day. I'll give you a perfect example of how lazy kids are today. Back in our day, we had a lollipop called the Charms Lollipop. It was like that big, that thick. You lick that lollipop, man. It was good. Lick that lollipop for about four days, and your mouth would turn red and green and orange. Man, that was a good lollipop. Here's how lazy they are today. They make a lollipop now. There's a battery in the handle, and the lollipop spins around. How lazy can you be? Uh, uh, I'm tired. I think we were the last generation to go outside and play. Everything we did was outside. You ran around the street until the street light came on, and that was a signal for everybody to go in the house. Every game we played was a running game. Hide and go seek was a running game. Tag was a running game. Some days you step out the house, you in the middle of a game, you didn't even know you was playing. <laughs> you ever played Cootie Stick 17? Never? Somebody would grab a stick like this, and they would rub it around in a little dog crap like that. <laughs> and they'd chase you all over the neighborhood with that thing. <laughs> you step out the house, somebody would yell, Cootie said, Cootie said, That's what we did. That's how we were. We ran. We ran in every game we played, running game. RCK, you ever play RCK 17? Ever play that game? Girls run and you chase them. If you could catch one, you could kiss her. That's right. RCK, run, catch, and kiss. Yeah. You know what you learned as a kid playing that game? The cute girls are really, really fast. Because <laughs> all the ugly girls run down the street. Oh, I fell. Oh. Just run up on them. Oh, excuse me. Gotta go. <laughs> Can't even be kids no more. You got pets at home, 17? Yeah, what you got? A dog. a dog. Yeah, we had a dog. Me and my brothers, we used to get hamsters. Hamsters were only a dollar a piece. All three of us could get one. And then we used to play Hamster Olympics. <laughs> Ever play that? Get a record player. <laughs> Put the hamster on the record player. First you start at 33, then at 45, then 78. <laughs> Man, there'd be hamsters flying all over that room. Zing, zing, zing. My brothers would cheat because they would dip theirs in crazy glue before they put them on the record player. <laughs> See little hamsters going around. Look at 17. What's your record player? <laughs> I'm a region from New York City. 
I get this all the time. You don't sound like a real black New Yorker. I think all black New Yorkers sound like this here. Say, what up with that? What's your man? What's going on? Yo, yo, what's up? What's up? I got family that talks like that. As soon as I do open the door in New York, it's care. Yeah, boy, yo, here, come here. Yo, give us a kiss. Step here, step here, give us a kiss. I'm like, yeah, settle down, uh, Grandma. I just, uh... <laughs> like I said, I got two older brothers. I got an older sister. When I was a kid, my father had the biggest car ever made in American history. A bigger than a Cadillac. A brand new 1967 Ford LTD Country Squire station wagon. <laughs> big car. Big. So big, didn't even have wood paneling on it. Like most station wagons had two full grown redwoods strapped inside. <laughs> now, my mother and my father sat up front. My brother, my sister, my brother, they sat in the middle. And they're way in the back. And I seat their face in the other direction. <laughs> This is my chair. <laughs> Anywhere we ever went, any trip we ever took, this is where I had to sit. <laughs> the only time I knew where we was going is when we backed out the driveway. <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> That's my job. Any trip we ever went on, it was my job every five minutes to ask, are we there yet? <laughs> no! Quit asking! Well, how the heck am I supposed to know? <laughs> I can still see the house from here. <laughs> now every summer my father got into his head that we had to go see America. Two weeks out of every year, go see America. Get out there in the open roads, get out there in those super highways, people waving to me all the time. <laughs> Now, up there with my brothers and sisters where they had all sorts of games to play with. Uh, coloring books, connected dots, toys, puzzles, all sorts of things to do up there. I was back here with my father's tools. <laughs> had to make up things to play with. Hey, there's a roll of dad's good tape. Boy, I bet I could have a lot of fun playing with that. You know, we used to go to the drive-in movie theater a lot. <laughs> the whole family be watching Bambi by Disney. I'm watching Bambi and Eddie. <laughs> 17, are you an old school kid? No? I'm going to give you the old school test. That your buddy next to you? How old are you? Uh, 17. 17? Uh, 17, officer. <laughs> both of you, stand up. Stand up. Stand right there. Right there. Right there. There you go. I'm going to give you both the old school test, okay? Here's we go. Here's what you're going to win. This is prizes involved. Here's what you're going to win. You're going to win a bag of old school candy, all right? It's got a wax bottle with the juice, got some pixie sticks, got this candy. What was this candy? Dots, yeah, it's got dots. They're little like half circles of cement, you know? <laughs> You're gonna eat more paper than candy, I'm telling you that right now, all right? So it's gonna be like a high fiber candy, okay. All right, so here we go, all right? All right, so all you have to do is answer one question right, okay? All right, don't help them. That's our future right here, 17, 17. All right, okay, so just get one question right, all right? Here we go, here's the first question. What is this? A number two pencil. No, no, you were so close, though. No, this is what we used to use to rewind our cassettes. <laughs> um, 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 all right, all right, come on, second two. All right, that's that's a hard one. Okay, here, what's this? This is easy. This is easy. What's this? Can you see that? You see that? What is that? A nickel. 
man, you were so close on this one. That was close. No, this is the exact amount of weight we needed to put on a record needle to keep it from skipping. I huh? uh, still don't know what a record player is. All right, all right. Okay, all right. Okay, this one's easy. Right, your dad got tools or your mom got tools? What's this? This is easy. What's that? Pliers? No, no, you were so close. Man, you were so close. No, this is what we used to use to change the channel on the TV. <laughs> I wouldn't lie to you, that's all we had. There was no remote back in the day. You were the remote. You'd be outside playing, your dad would come in the house. Your dad, uh, change that TV to channel seven. <laughs> All right, come on now, we're halfway through. You ain't get one yet. All right, come on. Talk. All, right, this is, all right, this is easy. This is easy. You've been to the store. Everybody's been to the store. What's this? That's easy. What's that? A brown paper bag. No, no, you, you were so close though. It's a book cover. <laughs> They're like shocked. You, you. I think he's like four for four over there. You know what this is, right? A book. Okay, because y'all scare me. Y'all don't know. If it ain't online, y'all don't know what it is. This is the original Google right here. This is it. This is the C-Book Encyclopedia. We were kids. Everybody had a set of encyclopedias, right? Britannica or World Book. If you had to write a report on Columbus, you got the C-Book. 30 kids in the class. Everybody copied out the book. <laughs> 30 of the same reports show up at school. All right, come on, we're getting near the end. I want you to win now. Okay, wait a minute. All right, this is easy. This one's easy. You've seen this. What is this? What is that? A phone book. No, you were so close. It's a booster chair. Oh, see it? Right? There you go, see? There you go. You see this? You saw this twice at your grandma's house. Thanksgiving and Christmas. That's what you saw. I know, because I had to use one, so okay. Still do. Anyway. All right, this is the last question. All right, this time, just ask somebody, because I don't want you to go home empty handed, all right? So ask somebody if you don't know the answer. Just ask them, all right? All right, this one's easy. This one's easy. Okay, let's see if I can get it out of here. All right, what is this? <laughs> An antenna? No, it's a hanger. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> now it's an antenna. There you go. Thanks, guys. There's one for you, one for you, 17. Thanks, 17, 17. Yes, sir. Gentlemen. Must be we're getting near. I uh I got a watch for Christmas. My son bought me a watch. I wanted a watch. I wanted a watch. <laughs> bought me an eye watch. Let's see. You can check your pictures. You can check your email. You can play your music. You can uh, make a phone call like Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy, 17? <laughs> you can, tell you how well you slept. Has a little heartbeat monitor. You can send your heartbeat to somebody. Yeah. I think they put that feature in there so your children don't have to visit you. Uh, let's see. You can tell the temperature in different countries. Today, somebody asked me what time it was. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> but it's 60 degrees and raining in Paris, I know that. <laughs> I have been blessed enough. I've done over 100 USO shows for the sh troops overseas. <laughs> You know, I think they ask too much about soldiers. Uh, you get captured by the enemy, you can't even give out information. Did you know that? Name, rank, serial number. That's all you can give away. 
I don't know if I could pull that off. They captured me. It's going to be like, hey, tell us where your troops are. I ain't telling you a thing. All right, you step over to this map over here. You see us lined up on the corner. They give them camouflage uniforms, BDUs. They used to call them in the army, that green and black camouflage. I understand army and marines having camouflage. They go in the jungle and say hi. They sneaky like that. They get that uniform to the Air Force, too. <laughs> what do you need to look like a tree for when you work in an air base? <laughs> Were you afraid the enemy gonna fly overhead? Ooh, stand still. <laughs> I like women in the military. I think it's sexy when women serve. Put that camouflage uniform on. Shh. Something about a woman dressed like a tree with boots on. Mm. <laughs> I'd buy you one, girl. I would. <laughs> Dress you up like a tree. Spray you a little pine saw. Send you out into the forest to hide from me. I'd run up on you. I'd be like, yeah, I got you. Thought you was hiding. Thought you would look like a tree. I wouldn't go find you, but I caught you. She'd be like, I'm over here. <laughs> Yeah, I never joined the military. I joined the police department. I was a Los Angeles police officer. Okay? You know what's amazing? As soon as I quit being a police officer, they had the Rodney King scandal, OJ scandal, Chief Dower Gate scandal, Rampart Division scandal, and the Gang Division scandal. All that happened after I quit. Who knew I was the glue hole that whole department together? <laughs> And being a cop, just like being in the military. Academies like boot camp, get up every morning, sing those running songs. Up in the morning with the rising sun. Run all day till the run and done. I hated that. <laughs> We're policemen. We should have been singing songs like, running around this gymnasium floor. We're out of donuts, gonna get some more. <laughs> Wasn't there a cop over here? Where, right there? Right there? Oh, there you are. Oh, look at it. Don't, don't point to them. Don't do that. We used to love people who pointed. That was our favorite people. When you pull somebody over, hey, you been drinking? He got, he got a bottle under the seat right there. Right there. <laughs> your police officer? Yeah, look at you. Don't like the light in your eyes. See what it feels like? You see that? Yeah. Yeah. All them people weren't drunk. They were blind. See how it happens? <laughs> what city? Logan. Oh, is that a big town? Big city? You got a helicopter? No. no. <laughs> you got a tank? LA, LAPD, we got a tank bus. Everybody got, everybody got to learn to drive. You got anything? You got, you got a siren on top of the car? You got that? <laughs> but a passenger officer got to stick his head out the window. Woo, woo, woo! Go, go on, get! Woo, woo, woo! Are you retired? Close. Close. Man, how many years you got on? 23. 23. Wow, that's a lot. Good for you. Man. Good for you. That's a lot. Where do you work? What, what do you work? I, I work at Juvenile Crimes. Juvenile Crimes. Well, look at 17. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's, that's my grandma's glaucoma medicine. That's what that was. <laughs> I worked patrol, the backbone of the department. Matter of fact, I had a female partner when I worked patrol. I had a female partner, 5'1", 110 pounds, that's it. And I'm only 5'4", 140. We got out of the car, we looked like the munchkins from the Wizard of Oz. <laughs> we used to walk up to the side of a car. We represent the alley, the alley, Get back in the car and drive away. Um, <laughs> people always say, why you become a cop? I can tell you why now. Because I got a Napoleon complex. <laughs> I got short man disease. My attitude when I was a cop was the bigger the guy was, the more I wanted to whoop his behind. I whooped up on some big guys. So I once whooped this guy up. He's like, like five, 
six months. It's a monster. I couldn't be a cop here in Provo. I tell you that right now, it is too cold. It is, t- I could not, I would never leave my warm police car. I'd get, get in behind like the worst criminal in town. I'd just get on the radio, step out of your vehicle. He yelled back, well, come up here and get me. All right, you can go. <laughs> I just got married. Six months in, going pretty good. My wife is a retired homicide detective. True story. She's a detective, a, a, a lieutenant homicide detective. My wife has a unique way of making me do things that I don't want to do. Like, I won't wash dishes. I ain't never washed no dishes. I ain't never going to wash no dishes. That's my thing. I ain't washing no dishes. My wife likes to watch a show called Dateline. You ever seen this show? It's always about a murder, usually a spouse, you know? And they show how the police solved the murder. She likes to watch that show with me. And then at the end of the show, she always go, you know what they did wrong on that show, right? When you bury a body, she put cement over the body. That way the dogs can't smell the body. And you always leave your phone off or leave it at home. Because when you drive with your phone, the GPS on the towers leaves a ping trail. That's how I would have done it. (laughs) You gonna get them dishes done? (laughs) (laughs) My wife has two guns. She's a detective. She has a two-inch, five-shot Smith & Wesson, and she has a Beretta. Locked in a case. When she moved into my house, she hid the guns. I said to her, where'd you put the guns? She goes, you do not need to know. (laughs) I can't even have a simple argument with my wife. I can't, you know? One day we were watching the game. She goes, man, the Lakers look good. I go, you crazy? Lakers stink. She goes, I'll be right back. I said, oh, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, I was joking. The Lakers are good. I'll I'll do the dishes. I'll do the dishes. I had a bachelor party. Are you married, 17? No? It's Utah, gotta ask. Yeah, nothing wrong with a bachelor party. Nothing wrong with a bachelorette party. You know the best party for a woman? Bridal shower. That's where the women get all them great gifts and I saw Victoria's Secret. Oh, that is my favorite store in the whole world. They should put a big keg of beer and some bleachers in that store. <laughs> Love all those sexy things. You married? Like all those sexy things in line? Yeah, I know you like them. You just don't get to see them anymore, do you? No. You only see it twice when you get married. You see it once on the honeymoon, you see it again if she wrecked your car really bad. That's it. Because I tell you what, every woman in here, every single woman in here has a ton of lingerie at home, a ton of it, all stuffed in the one drawer, so full of lingerie, you can't even open that drawer. Full of lingerie. They don't ever wear none of that to bed, no. You know what they wear? That nasty, oversized, Utah jazz t-shirt. That's what they wear. Shirt so old, still got a picture of Carl Malone on the front of it. <laughs> Victoria's Secret. They always have a women's underwear sale going on in that store, right? Never go to a men's store, it's a men's underwear sale. That's because men think a three-pack of underwear is a 15-year supply. <laughs> We will wear them and wear them till the elastic band just disintegrates. <laughs> we don't throw them away then. Then we take them outside and wash the car with them. Look at that. Hey! <laughs> These are my Scooby Doo's. These are good. <laughs> let me tell you guys something about, let me tell you something about police work for a change. Let me tell you something real quick. Anybody in here ever get a speeding ticket? Yeah? Really? You know why you got it? Because you deserve it. <laughs> Right? You guys don't listen. The speed limit says 55. That's what it says. That's the limit. Oh, officer, don't they allow you five miles? No! <laughs> Where does the sign say 55? But if your favorite song come on the radio, go on, take five more for yourself. They don't say that! <laughs> 55! That's what it says on the sign. 
Alexa, ain't 55 with a little winky emoji on it? 55. No, it's 55. You go to the mountains, you get on the edge of the mountain, the signs say, this is your limit. You don't go, hey, let's take five more steps. <laughs> and if you get a ticket, just pay the ticket. Pay the ticket. Don't try to bribe the officer. I've had guys offer me cash. I had a guy offer me cocaine. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh yeah, that's real smart. <laughs> Don't pay a $150 ticket. Go to jail for two years. How about that? That's a good trade-off. I had a person once say to me, I'll show you my breasts if you let me off the ticket. I was like, uh, uh, listen, no, no, sir, you don't have to do that. I just. <laughs> you can leave, but no, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. Sometimes, let me tell you guys something about police on the inside police work. Sometimes you'll see two officers working together, they don't always get along. You know, I've had some bad partners. I had this one partner, I hated that guy. All he'd do is yell at me, don't touch the log sheet, don't touch the radio. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't touch anything. You understand? Yeah, yeah. Then he'll go back and tell the captain, Jordan just sits there, he won't touch the log sheet, won't touch anything. Yeah. Officer Tucker was his name. Tucker the, well, Tucker, we'll leave it there. I just Tucker. <laughs> so one day me and Tucker get a call. And we uh, make an arrest. I'm putting the guy away in the holding cell. Now, when you put a guy away in the holding cell, you take off all your weapons. You take off your primary weapon, take off your secondary weapon, take off your mace, take off everything. You lock it away. That way, there's no accidents when you put them away. So I'm processing the guy. There's a bang on the glass. It's Tucker. Come on, we got to go. We got to go. There's a 211 at Winchell's right up the street. Come on. Now, for those of you who don't know, Winchell's <laughs> is a donut shop in Los Angeles. If you're a criminal robbing a donut shop two blocks from a police station, it's pretty certain we're gonna catch you. <laughs> so he's banging on the glass. Come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. So I'm like, I haven't finished process. Come on, come on, we gotta go. So out we go, we run, jump in the cruiser, we head over there. Halfway there, I realize I have no weapons on me. We get to Winchell's just as the two guys are coming out of Winchell's. We pull up, Tucker jumps out on the driver's side, pulls his weapon, prones him out. I jump out on the passenger side. I don't have anything, so I just point my finger at him. <laughs> Tucker says, hey, I'm going to go inside to see if there's any more. You sit out here and you hold these guys here. <laughs> he runs into Winchell's. I'm saying, even they're looking at me like, what's going on? Like, hey, put your head down, put your head down. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> Tucker comes out, looks at me. I look at him. He looks at me, he goes, you should take the safety off. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I did a lot of cool things on the job. Coolest thing I ever did was deliver a baby. That is the coolest thing I ever done. You know, this woman, uh, uh, her water broke, and it was cool because I got my name in the LA Times the next day and everything. But this woman, her water broke, and she calls her husband to come get her, and he don't show up. So she tried to drive herself to the hospital, and she panicked to pull into a 7-Eleven. Somebody saw my cruiser at a red light. Ran, uh, they ran out the street and got me, had to turn around, come back in, and deliver a baby in a 7-Eleven. Got my name in the LA Times, the next day, everything. Let me tell you something. You work for LAPD, they just assume you know how a baby's born. <laughs> they don't show you a video, ain't no puppet show, nothing. <laughs> I ain't never seen no baby born before. I thought a baby would pop out, and maybe even a blanket pop out with him, huh? <laughs> There's a lot of things that come out of there with that baby. <laughs> I thought you was having twins. I was like, you know, uh, mm, one of them looked like you. And the little one, you're gonna have to love him special. He ugly, I, I was like, I was an ugly child. Oh my God. Oh, that's God. Here's the best part. You'll appreciate this the most, other. Here's the best part. So then when the, when the EMT came and took her to the hospital, when she pulled into 7-Eleven, she pulled into a handicap slot. So I wrote a car, ticket, and it towed away. <laughs> That's it for me. I gotta get it. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for sticking around.